In this video, we're going to be going over the differences between vibe coding, prompt engineering, and prompt driven development. And focusing on prompt driven development, we are going to explore some of the features in VS Code that makes life easy while working with prompts, such as custom mode, prompt files, copilot vision, and more. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Lately, with the rise of AI, a lot of new terms have come to the forefront around how we actually code. Different styles are emerging, some playful, some structured, and some are becoming full methodologies. And in this segment, I want to break down a few of them so that you could see where they overlap, where they differ, and how you might use them in your workflow. Specifically, the ones that I'm going to be talking about are vibe coding, prompt engineering, and prompt driven development. Now let's start with vibe coding. This is essentially when you code by instinct, just going with the flow and writing what feels right. It's creative, experimental, and fun, but the results could be inconsistent and not always repeatable. Fun fact, the term vibe coding was actually coined by Andre Carpathy in a viral post describing it as an approach where developers give in to the vibes and use natural language prompts to guide large language models, relying on intuition and intent rather than detailed code structures. Next is prompt engineering. Instead of just going with vibes, here you're deliberate. You craft prompts carefully, structured inputs designed to steer the AI towards specific predictable results. Think of it like moving from doodling to drafting. There's just more intention behind the design. And finally, there's prompt driven development. This isn't just about crafting individual prompts. It's about treating prompts as part of a discipline and development process. Ideally, prompts are tested, versioned, documented, and refined over time. You're not just asking the AI for help, you're building workflow where prompts are the building blocks of your code base. And prompt-driven development is gonna be the focus of this video. And I do wanna mention one person's prompt-driven development approach can be very different from someone else. So don't feel that you need to go strictly by the book. What I'm gonna be sharing is what I consider more my style, but in general, it's just like programming. We could all have our different flavors of programming, but there are general best practices we want to get into the habit of doing. When it comes to prompt-driven development, before you do anything, you need to have an idea of what you're going to do, right? Well, I want to show you how you could use VS Code to just brainstorm ideas for what we could create. So I'm going to go ahead and first open up a folder. And since we're focusing in the spirit of best practices, I want to go ahead and show you how I do things, at least on my end. I like to have my projects in a dev folder. And for this particular project, I'm going to call it, what do they do it in Hollywood? Sometimes you don't have like a name of a movie yet. Untitled Prompt Driven Development project and we could rename it later on. Let's open up this folder. I want to ask Copilot to give me some ideas of some apps that I could create that I might be able to convert into a mobile app. So essentially what we're going to be doing is using it to brainstorm some ideas and then we're going to like document like some high level steps for us to get started. Can you go ahead and give me 10 app ideas I can create as a website first and then later make sense to create it as a mobile app. Let's see what it gives us. And what I'm going to use this is for inspiration. Like I might not take exactly the ideas that it gives, but it might give me some guidance. So let's see here. Local services, marketplace, searchable marketplace for cleaning, tutoring. Okay, I see. Per personal finance, budget dashboard. All right. Community knowledge hub. Interesting knowledge. That makes me think of academia, which makes me think of studying, event planning. All right, interesting. Micro learning platform for our teams, short courses, modules, quizzes. You see that? It makes me think of when I would like practice for in school or just like for job interviews, especially in the tech world, um, flashcards. I remember getting trying to look for flashcard apps, and a lot of them were just really convoluted. It would have been nice to just have a simple one. So, why don't we do that? You know, micro 
micro learning, like a flashcard app to learn something, right? So now I'm going to ask it to create me like a little documentation plan. All right. Um, I think I want to create a flashcard uh, app, like a web version. Can you create a markdown file with some high level initial steps that I can take as prompts that I can consider using? We'll stop there. <laughs> I was like literally just thinking of this as I just came up with the idea. So we're going to see what, what happens here. But that's going to be like my step. I usually like to have some type of guideline. Now, I sometimes do things in Word or Google Doc, but it's nice to be able to also do it in Markdown because then you could save your process, especially if you're going to share it with the team and save it to GitHub. So let's see here. Flashcards web app, initial steps and prompt list. Look at that. Concise prompts you can use to scope, design, build, and later convert the web version flashcard app to mobile. This is insane. This is so good. So, so far we use a VS Code to brainstorm an idea for a nap and then use it as a writing tool just to get an initial draft of our approach for building our app. High level documentation. So I'm going to step away, look this over, and then we're going to come back for our next step. Now, after reviewing this, I like what it has here, but it's a little bit more abstract than I cared for. Really what I was looking for were some prompts that guided me through the process of creating my flashcard web application. So I'm going to ask it to change and modify this. And that's one of the things that you'll realize, the more you get sophisticated with prompt-driven development, the more you realize the importance of reprompting. It's rare that you could just do your first prompt and then it's perfect right away. Oftentimes you need to like modify the prompt. But before I modify this, there's some nuggets here that I'd like to keep. So I'm going to save this to GitHub. I want to show you how you could do this straight from VS Code. And let's just use a uh, voice chat to do this. Let's save this to VS Code. I mean, let's save this to GitHub, but also I'll need you to initialize a repository for me called Flashcard web version. I'm going to stop this by clicking the stop button right here. It didn't finish my sentence and, and this is important. Let's do it again. Uh, let's save this to GitHub and I'd like to make sure that you create a repository for me since it doesn't exist yet. And we're going to call this flashcard. Ah, that's good enough for now. So it's asking me to confirm these, which I do appreciate, even though we're in agent mode. In agent mode, it tends to do a lot of the tasks back to back, but when it comes to certain important parts, it'll ask you to validate. So I'm gonna make sure that it knows that I want it to be called I want a better name. Actually, I'm just going to call it uh, Flashcard Web App. In fact, let's give it a nicer name. That's a little bit more catchy. Simple Flash Card Web. Okay, that looks good so far. And by the way, I should mention that I am logged in with my GitHub account, which you can make sure that you do also from right over here. So it seems like it failed to create the repo on GitHub, but it can do this locally. So I'm going to go ahead and have it do it locally. And then we're going to troubleshoot and try to get it to do it on GitHub. It asked me if I wanted the repo either private or public. I said public. And yes, I wanted to run the CLI commands to get going. Okay, we're looking at these commands here. And those look good. So let's continue. I'm going to click on the left source control icon here, just so we can see where things are at. And now I will check the repository status and the last commit. It wants me to confirm that the GitHub CLI is installed and authenticated. How would you like me to confirm that the GitHub CLI is installed and authenticated? I have my own ways I could do this, but I want to see what it expects. All right, GH. So by using the chat, I went back and forth as it guided me through the steps that I needed to take in order to push it to my new repo. And ultimately, this is the result now. Okay, so now that we have this saved on GitHub, I want to go ahead and, and modify these uh, steps here. I like what you gave me so far, but it's a little too high level. Can you just give me a series of steps that I can, uh, can you give me a series of prompts that I can go step by step to create a flashcard web version of an app that I can later turn into a mobile app? 
All right, it gave me the steps, but you'll notice that it did not put that in the markdown file. I actually wanted to modify the markdown file, so I'm going to tell it to do that. And I'm also going to specify a couple of features that I want. And this is the beauty of doing this. It's a dance back and forth with your software on how and best to communicate with it, your thoughts. Can you go ahead and uh, rewrite this, but also include the fact that I would like to have categories in my flash card app for different topics and also put all this in the markdown file that you've already created earlier. I want you to update it with this new content, this new step-by-step -step approach. All right. I think hopefully that does it. <laughs> Look at that. There it is. It's updating the markdown, it looks like. And now I'm not going to expect this to be perfect either, but it's going to be a lot closer to what I want. Okay. Updated flashcards, initial steps in the project route with the expanded step by step plan that includes categories, topics. Let's go ahead, keep it, and take a look here. Okay. Vision and categories, access metrics, high level information. Okay. So next, we're going to go ahead and execute the creation of this app by referencing this document. So let's see how that turns out. Based on the document that we have in our workspace, let's go ahead and create a web app for a flashcard application. You know what's nice about this, even though you might uh, trip on your words, it just figures out what you're going to say um, most of the times. You should have access to what I pushed on GitHub, and you'll see that it does mention the stack here, like for number five, the stack and architecture, that it's going to be React plus Vite app or Next.js. I guess we'll see what it ends up choosing. Next.js plus uh, TypeScript. Okay, based on like the files here, it looks like Vite is involved. And meanwhile, while this is working, I'll clear my terminal. Okay, now it's made, it's created the application and it's asked me to push to GitHub, but I want to see if it works first, if it's done creating it. Can we test the application before pushing to GitHub? All right, so we're going to have to install some dependencies here. So let's do that. I mean, it doesn't make sense to save it to GitHub, right? Especially if it's not going to work yet or if there's some issue that we don't know about. All right, it looks like it finished installing. So let's start the app. All right, point it to the right path. We need to execute npm run dev. And here's our first look. <laughs> not too pretty. I mean, let's see how it even works here. What does MCP stand for? Okay, that turned out into a link. Oh, I see. That was a deck. And so front and back. So this is where I would put the question, what does MCP stand for? And then answer would be model context protocol. I see. So we saved the card. Oh, look at that. And then you could start a study session. <laughs> there you go. What does MCP stand for? Reveal. Model context protocol. Oh, how adorable. What are these numbers here for? I'm not sure what that's for. All right, cool. Well, I mean, that's a start. Okay, so let's stop this and, and ask it to make it look more modern. The app looks okay. It's functional so far, but can you make it look modern? It looks too vanilla right now. Add some pizzazz to it. One of the practices I like to follow is to make sure that we save often when we see things are working the way that we expect it to. Okay, it says done. I have the index HTML and replaced the style sheet with a more modern polished design. Okay, well, let's say keep and start the app again. Well, that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? Let's click on here. Okay, we could add more questions here. That does look better. What I want though is the ability to change the change this like let's say if i want to modify this i don't see where we could edit that that's a feature we could add no worries for now let's save this and then we could add the features next push to github all right so we're at a good start here and we actually got like a lot done but let's talk about some other features and experiment with some other models now before we move on i do want to show you something uh, that's referred to as a new feature that we have called custom chat mode. And the way, the reason I want to show you this is because while I appreciated the 
high-level steps that Copilot gave us, I do want it to be a little bit more specific, and I don't want to have to keep asking it each time for future projects. So if we go to our options where we could change from agent to ask and edit, you'll see that there's an option for configure modes, and we could create, refer to as a new chat mode, a custom chat mode. If I choose user data folder, I can give it a name such as plan mode, and here is where you can give it a description and specify tools that it use and then define the purpose for this chat. If you'd like to learn more about how chat modes work, we have like really great docs on it right over here. Chat modes in VS Code. And right over here is custom chat modes. It explains the file structure of it. Now for time sakes, I'm gonna copy and paste what I've already created, which is essentially telling it to simplify high level plans to refactor it. And I give it details instructions on how to do that. As you can see, I have a plan mode instructions, the purpose for this task, some constraints, and also how I want the output to be. So I'm going to close this and change this to plan mode. And then I'll ask it, can you refactor the markdown file called flashcards initial steps so that it's refactored based on my plan mode settings? Now, I probably didn't even have to mention that, but I went ahead and did that. All right, and this is what I wanted it to do. So now let me tell it to put it in Markdown. See, this time it's giving specific prompts that I could just copy and paste into Copilot. So in the future, if I want to hand this off to someone to recreate, it's a lot more direct. Whereas over here is very verbose. You see, it's saying to pick three metrics. It's asking you questions that you need to like answer in order to be able to write down separately and then come up with props. Go ahead and replace all the markdown with what you just gave me. Oh, did you notice it? So it says it can't do it right now because it's disabled. Well, that's because I, I put that in like in the instructions. So I could actually just come here now and copy it and paste it all in the markdown. <laughs> and there you go. And now I can just switch this back to agent mode. But that's a quick view of how custom chat modes work. You can have one set up for research purposes and a whole other set of scenarios. Now I'll go ahead and save this skip to GitHub offline and move on to our next step, which is to add some features using what's referred to as prompt files. All right, so we're running our app and I want to add the feature to be able to remove any decks that we created. What I'm going to do is take a screenshot of this here and then within chat, I'm gonna drag that screenshot here and you'll notice that we're able to drop images in the chat and ask questions based on it. So I'm going to ask it to give me an edit feature to rename the deck that we're looking at. Based on the image, you see that there's a question there. I want us to be able to rename that question. It cut me off too fast here, but it realized it doesn't have all the information it needs. I would like you to add the feature so that we can rename that question, which is the deck. So please go ahead and uh, add that feature so we could rename and even delete a deck. So what we're displaying right now is the ability to use Copilot Vision to see an image and then give it a command based on that. Looks like it's making some changes. Let's test the feature before saving it to GitHub. It's a little eager to save things to GitHub. I understand that's important, but we wanna make sure that we're saving code that works. All right. Well, let's see how this works. Oh, wow. There you go. Pretty cool. Let's change this to technology. It even has like a little memo section for description. Software development questions. Let's add another question. What does VS stand for? JavaScript. Cool. Let's start a study session. MCP. Let's reveal model context protocol. Okay. Let's choose five here. What does JS stand for? JavaScript. Now I'll have to look at the uh, specs again, how it designed this program, but I believe this is probably how well you know the material. So if I'm five, it might not pop the question again. If I'm zero, it probably will. 
which is kind of cool, but I'll click this five for now. Before wrapping up, I do want to just fix the heading a little. We could just do a little bit of that UI work there by just coming up here and just adding a little space between these words here. And I'm gonna have this all on GitHub and I'd like you guys to feel free to put in some suggestions either through GitHub via pull request or in the comments, what features would you like to see if this were to be converted into a mobile app? And I could take some of those into consideration. And that's it for this introduction to prompt driven development. If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. And let me know in the comments, what other topics would you like to see related to prompt driven development? And before you head out, feel free to check out this video here too. That's it for now. And I'll see you in the next one.